good? Okay. Welcome back from lunch. Oh, that's better. Our second session of the day continues the conversation about education, broadly defined. Um, and we will focus now on language and linguistics and the language debate in Morocco. And I'm glad to see some of our Year of Morocco seminar students because I, you'll see a lot of connections to what we've talked about in class. Um, so glad you're here. Our next three speakers will confront recent events in language and education policy in Morocco, the linguistic evolution in the wake of Morocco's February 20th movement, and the, particul um, the particularities of Darija, or Moroccan Arabic, and the multilingualism that exists in Morocco. Um, again, each presentation will be around 15 minutes, and we will save questions until the very end and have some time to ask questions of the presenters. So our first presenter is Dr. Maria Shakir. She was born in El Jadida, Morocco. She graduated from Shoeb Dukali University with a BA in English in 1998 and came to the United States as an Arabic teaching assistant at the University of Hawaii in the Fulbright Exchange Program in 2003-2004. She returned to the United States in 2006 to start a second master's degree or to start, I'm sorry, her first master's degree in French at Ohio University, and then followed up with her second master's degree in applied linguistics, graduating in 2010. Dr. Uh, um, Dr. Shakir was a visiting professor of French and Arabic at Grand Valley State University in Michigan from 2010 to 2013, and currently she is a lecturer of French and Arabic at Valdosta State University here in Georgia. Her research interests focus on Arabic linguistics, Francophone literature, and her presentation is entitled The Linguistic Evolution in Morocco After February 20th. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Shakir. Thank, Thank you, Amanda. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? So my presentation is uh, on the linguistic evolution in Morocco after the 20th February movement, and I will focus uh, particularly on Derija. But before we start talking about the linguistic evolution, let's have a look at the linguistic landscape of Morocco. In Morocco, there are uh, different languages that are used in uh, different situations and that have different functions. Uh, the first language that existed in Morocco is Berber and is the mother tongue of Amazigh and there are three varieties of Berber, Tamazigh, Tashihit, uh, Tarifit. Uh, and then there is Arabic and there are also three varieties of Arabic, classical Arabic and it's used in religion. Standard Arabic is the official language of Morocco and it's used in education and administration and in the government. And Darija is the mother tongue of the majority of Moroccan. It's the lingua franca used by most of Moroccan, and it's the language used in the daily communication. Foreign languages, we have French, which is the dominant language uh, in Morocco. It's used in business and higher education in the job market. Spanish is used mostly in the north, and it's the official language in the two Spanish cities in Morocco, Ceuta and Melilla. And English is growing now in Morocco. It's more used in tourism and in internet. Language policies in Morocco. So in the pre-colonial colonized Morocco, Arabic was the dominant language. And it was the language of education. And the system of schools was uh, religious uh, schools, what's called madrasa. In the colonized uh, Morocco, it was French that was the dominant language used in administration, in education, and in the government, and the system was like French uh, system of schools. In the post-colonized uh, Morocco, or post-independent uh, period, Morocco adopted Arabization uh, policy with focus on replacing French with uh, standard Arabic in uh, all major sectors, and standard Arabic became the official language uh, of Morocco. The relationship between MSA, which stands for Mother Standard Arabic in Derija, is diagnostic, and that's uh, a term that uh, Ferguson used uh, in his essay in 1959, uh, uh, which uh, shows that there is a feature, a hierarchy between the two uh, varieties of language. 
when we refer here to Arabic, so there is a high variety which refers to MFA and the low variety uh, and it's Darija which is marked as the low variety in Morocco. Other linguists uh, use different terms, like UC, he used triglossia to refer to modern standard Arabic, classical Arabic and Darija. And in Neji, he used uh, quadriglossia. He had a fourth type of Arabic, which is used by uh, Moroccan who are educated. But in general, the relationship between Darija and uh, MFA, Darija provides MFA with the human interaction, and MFA provides Darija with uh, a rich lexicon. The attitudes of Moroccans uh, towards the languages that exist in Morocco is different. So there is a negative attitude towards Darija and Berber in general, the mother tongues, because uh, they are associated with illiteracy. And there is a positive attitude toward classical Arabic since it's related to religion and towards uh, MFA since it's related to national identity. French is seen as the language of modernity and prestige and English is uh, seen as a language of science and openness. But in, from 2000 to 2010, uh, Derija knew and witnessed a change so we start to see Darija is more visible and it's more used in Rotten and this is uh, due to different factors. So uh, Telke was the first Moroccan magazine, French magazine that started using Darija and they launched uh, an Arabic version which is called Michel in 2006. And Duzem, uh, the Moroccan national uh, TV started dubbing foreign Mexican, especially Mexican series in Derija, and also Turkish uh, series in Derija. The internet also contributed to the spread of uh, Derija and uh, SMS, so Moroccan started to use Derija a lot in their uh, communication. The 20th uh, February movement is a social movement that started in Morocco uh, in 2011. It was inspired by Arab Spring and the revolution that started in uh, Tunisia and Egypt. But it was different from these uh, kind of revolutions that started in other countries. The members of this revolution, they just wanted uh, some social changes in Morocco. They wanted to end corruption and they wanted a new constitution. So uh, the members of this movement, they started using Derija uh, and they started, they created Facebook. This is how they started, Facebook group, and they started uh, talking about uh, their demands and what they want and the changes they want to see in Morocco. So they were the first to start using Derija because f Facebook, according to a study conducted by uh, Mira and Kobe, uh, Facebook was um, safe, uh, they, I would quote, they said it was a safe uh, area or space uh, for Moroccans. So before that, the politics was never discussed in Facebook. And on February 13, uh, the members of the movement, they published a YouTube video in Derija in which they explained their uh, the reasons behind their protesting. And uh, they used also Derija in their written slogans when they were protesting and uh, dem demonstrating. So the 20th uh, February militants, they used Derija also in uh, other blocks. And one of the famous uh, blocks that Miller uh, mentioned is memfakinj.com. So uh, after the 20th, uh, 20th February movement, we saw different changes in Morocco, linguistically speaking. So Morocco shifted from a monolingual ideology to a multilingual ideology. And we can see that in the new constitution in which they recognized Berber and Hassania as official languages beside Arabic. Derija also knew uh, some uh, changes in Morocco, so Derija was the first time used in politics in, uh, and also in TV, on TV uh, in political debates and uh, the first minister Ben Kiran 
was the first minister to start using derija, use it in his first interview and uh, in uh, his political discourse. And as I said before, uh, Facebook, people in Facebook started to talk more uh, about politics and discuss more politics. And uh, in uh, 2013, the Zagura Foundation, they uh, organized an international conference on education and they suggested to start using Derisha in the first two years uh, of primary school, which created a national debate on the use of Derija in education. So my research questions are, is modern standard Arabic facing a tremendous challenge from Derija? What are the attitudes of Moroccans after Arab Spring towards Derija? And are Moroccans reconstructing their identity by using Derija? My hypothesis. So my research questions are, my hypothesis are, Derija became a threat to MSA since it broke the shell of orality and passed to the writing sphere. Moroccans are starting to view Derija as a language that represents identity, modernity, democracy, and authenticity. The methods I use, uh, uh, I adopted uh, quantitative and qualitative approaches in this uh, research. So I used questionnaire in Arabic and I conducted interviews using WhatsApp and Facebook. There were uh, 50 per, uh, participants from different regions in Morocco and uh, they were divided based on uh, age and education. So the first group consists of uh, participants whose age was between 20 and 35 and the second group consisted of participants whose age was between 36 and 55 and uh, there were 25 participants who have a university degree and 25 who didn't have a university degree. The first statement in the questionnaire was Derija represent Moroccan identity. So for this statement, uh, there was a strong agreement, as you can see here. So 68% uh, agrees agree with the statement and 32 disagree with the statement. And this showed that most of the Moroccan, they relate Derija to their national identity. Uh, there was no difference based on the education, but there was a slight difference between the older generation and the younger generation. Uh, some of the older generation, they, when interviewed, they said that they still relate uh, MSA to their national uh, identity and Islamic identity. Derija is a language of modernity and democracy. So here, 52% uh, disagree with the statement and 42% uh, agree with it, agree with it, and 6% were neutral. So uh, the majority disagree with this statement and most of those who disagree with this statement, they were uh, more educated. And uh, when asked why they disagree with the statement, they said that they relate modernity uh, with to French and English, to foreign languages, not to Arabic. Derija should be the language of teaching. There was strong disagreement here. So 68% disagree and 32% agree with the statement. And when asked why they don't agree with this statement, uh, some people said that Derija is not codified and standardized to be used in education. 
Some said that it's not rich enough like standard Arabic to be used in education. While those who agree with the statement, they said that using the Rija will uh, help uh, and facilitate students' learning. And some of them, they said that it will also reduce the rate of illiteracy. Derija should be taught at school. Here again, there was a strong disagreement with this statement. 84% uh, disagree with the statement and 16% disagree with the statement. So uh, there was no difference based on education or age. So the majority, they don't see that Derija fit to be included in the academia and education. Derija should be used at work. So uh, again, the majority did not agree with this statement. Only a few people agree with it. Uh, and when asked why they don't want to see Derija used at work, uh, some of them, they say it's not professional to use Derija. So they grow up uh, using French or uh, standard Arabic uh, at work. So they don't see that Derija will fit in professional environment. Derija should be used at the parliament and in political discourse. So here there was a strong agreement with the statement. 80% agree with the statement, 14% disagree, and 6% were neutral. When asked why they want to see more Derija used in the parliament and in the political discourse, they said that that's the language that people understand and it's uh, a language of proximity, so it should be used more in politics. I will not uh, go over all the statements in the questionnaire since we don't have time, so I will go to the finding. Sorry about this. Um, Sorry about that. So uh, the findings of this study, Derija is used by the majority of the participant as a symbol of national identity. Most of the uh, Moroccan participants, they want to see Derija more in economy and in politics. Most of Moroccans are in favor of using Derija in broadcasting and in dubbing foreign TV series. The majority of Moroccans resist the idea of using Derija in academia and education. Derija is not considered to be rich enough to be used in written literature. The majority thinks that the revitalization and revival of Derija is not a threat to MFA or to the Islamic identity since they relate uh, MFA more to religion and not Derija. MFA is still highly valued by uh, the more educated and the less educated population. The university educated are more conservative about the use of Derija at work or in written literature and even in the press. The young population associate Derija more with modernity and democracy. So the conclusion is Moroccans start to embrace Derija as a symbol of their national identity. Moroccans are becoming aware that democratization will not take place without valorization and revival of Derija. MSA, Modern Standard Arabic, is still retained 
It still retains its prestigious status. The resistance of the idea of using Darija in education, uh, especially among the more educated, shows a strong standard ideology in Morocco. And Darija and MFA will continue to e coexist and enrich each other. But there are limitations to this study. The first limitation is the small size, so the results must not be inter they must be interpreted with caution since the size of the participant was small. It was challenging to access participants online, so when I conducted this survey, I was here, so I just contacted people using WhatsApp, Facebook, and uh, emails, and not many people respond. The other things we have to keep in mind that uh, in surveys and questionnaires, some participants, they give response that reflect the social norms and what is believed to be correct. So they don't really uh, give uh, answers that reflect what they think or what they do. Thank you. Thank you.